Good morning. I'm going to ring our bells twice this morning to start our service with enough time in between for a deep, centering, grounding breath. My name is Karen Mills, and together with Gordon Ritchie, I have the pleasure of co-directing Coriolis and welcoming you this morning both into the literal warmth of the room and the warmth of community. The Unitarian Church of Edmonton is a liberal, religious, multi-generational community. We celebrate a rich mosaic of free-thinking, spiritually questing individuals who are joined in common support and action. We welcome diversity pursue the common good, and work for justice. We believe in the compassion of the individual heart, the warmth of community, and the search for meaning in our lives. We gather this morning with gratitude on traditional Cree lands, now part of Treaty 6 and shared by many nations. A treaty is an inheritance, a responsibility, and a relationship. May we be good neighbors to one another and good stewards to our planet, and good ancestors to all our children. As has become our tradition over the last few years, our February choir service is done in what we call a Taizé style, and that is a style of worship that was created rather recently in France by a monk who wanted to have worship and celebration and church services be more participatory and still give people a chance for meditation, but also notice that people really enjoyed music but didn't get a chance to participate in it all that often. And so the style of service is short readings interspersed by congregational singing and pieces that are very simple lyrics and repeated several times so that it becomes kind of a meditation, a singing meditation, and a time to reflect on what the reading was. And so that will be our style this morning. As I read our opening words, I would invite Corley Cairns forward to light our chalice. Spirit of life who draws us together in a web of holy relationships, make your presence known with us and in us and among us. Remind us that we are not alone in history. Ignite us with the courage of the living tradition. Remind us that we are not alone in entering the future. Anchor us with patience and perseverance. Remind us that we are not alone in our times of grief and pain. Comfort us with your spirit manifest in human hands and voices. Remind us that we are not alone in joy and wonder. Inspire us to honor and extend the beauty we find in the world. Source of stars and planets and water and land, Open our hearts to all our neighbors. Open our souls to a renewal of faith. Open our hands to join together in the work ahead. So be it. Amen and blessed be. May we be reminded here of our highest aspirations and inspired to bring our gifts of love and service to the altar of humanity. And may we know once again that we are not isolated beings, but connected in mystery and miracle to the universe, to this community, and to each other. The following text is a meditation on truth and reconciliation by Reverend Diane Rollert. On Wednesday, April 24th, and Friday, April 26, 2013, I spent time at the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. This prayer is for all the children of the First Nations who lost their innocence, their culture, their language, and their lives to the residential schools established by the government and run by the Churches of Canada. O Great Spirit, in the halls are all your children, some too overcome by emotion to speak, others have let go of silence, so that all who have gathered can hear the truth and come together to be reconciled. Walking to the great salon, through the hundreds of people milling around, 
waiting for the next event to begin, there are moments to be caught. One woman listening attentively as she rubs the shoulders of another woman in tears. Slipping past, I hear her saying, I'm having flashbacks. I cannot tell if she was Aboriginal or not. I can only tell you that this place is filled with painful memories, with pain and healing. The stories flow from witness to witness as they speak before one of the commissioners. A woman draped in a shawl printed with eagle wings begins in her own language, then speaks in French. As a child, she saw her own village from the windows of the school, but could never go home, could never see her parents, and when she returned, she was broken, unable to reconnect with her family. My spirit, my soul was stolen, she said. Yet healing comes in marching, in standing witness to injustice. Out of the dark hole of loss, out of the emptiness that got filled with drugs and alcohol, she rises, a grandmother, a wise elder. She has heard from the spirits and how to continue on. Tell the priest we are not his children, she says. We are children of the Creator. We are children of the earth. A man tells the story of childhood joy, of love and belonging, of his own father telling him in the forest, the birds are singing to you, my son. Then the priest takes him away. Come, my little one, we will take a trip together. It takes a lifetime to heal from what was done. A younger brother lost for 40 years until his mother finally learns where his body lies buried. There were so many of us there from the village, so many of us who cannot speak. Beside me, a woman sobs. A volunteer rushes forward with tissues, glasses of water, gentle hands that offer solace as best they can. A man speaks of unspeakable abuse, of a shame, of a body that can never forget, of wounds that worsen with age. He weeps and gives his thanks for the hundreds who have come to listen and to bear witness. The last man speaks. We think we know him. Today he is a politician, but his childhood was spent in a residential school in Quebec. I may seem normal, he says, but I am not normal. I can never be normal. No one who went to those schools can never be normal. The history of Canada, the politics of Canada, did this to me. Now we are all crying in the hall. Crying for what was done, for what has been lost. Crying for reconciliation, for forgiveness, for the smallest steps taken toward healing. O great spirit, may we say, never again. May we never forget. We gather with a hunger for reconciliation. What is done cannot be undone. What is done next must be done with care. We gather because we are hopeful, because we have visions and dreams of a brighter future, that there may be more than vision in this room. These are the wounds we must heal together. Grief and anger for all that is being lost. Guilt or fear in the reliving. Pain that has gone without sufficient comfort. Mistrust that was earned, that continues burning still. Every injury we may have named and yet still carry. Those we haven't, can't, or dare not speak aloud. Those We are not ready to make public those still not recognized, accepted, understood. These are the wounds that seek replacement, not cancellation or denial, wounds we will tend cautiously, 
applying the salve of understanding, forming scars that mark our history without disfiguring the future we might share. This is not a time for quick solutions, fancy talking. This is a slow precision. This is a prayer for peace. We are new at this endeavor, new at listening, new at hearing, new at taking enough time to honestly receive one another's stories. What is done cannot be undone. What is done next must now be done with care. We gather because we are hopeful, because we have visions and dreams of a brighter future. May the strength of this time together help us walk forward. May the wisdom of this experience help us know the path. May we have the courage to return as often as necessary until our way is clear. May we have the perseverance together to see it through. May we cause it to be so. These are words by Sweet Home Teacup. May we recognize and abandon the familiar attitudes and practices that do not serve the whole. We are who we are, and we have the opportunity to be who we want to be, to create a new inheritance for the future. May our thoughts, words, and actions in our daily lives assist in dismantling paradigms of oppression and suffering. May we give thanks for our individual place in time and space to our families and our relationships that touch and change us. May we give thanks to the wise teachers who help us remember how to be and the chance to make it so. Underneath and within these stories and histories is our humanity. Being human means we are of this earth. We are these waters. We are fire and atmosphere. We are the sun and the moon and the stars. We are all that we see, and the wisdom is revealed by looking in between. Let us open our hearts, still our minds, and enter a time of prayer. Let us call forth and hold in our hearts the stories of all who have come before us, the memories of those who are with us today, and the hope for tomorrow and for all of those who will come after us. Let us be thankful for this opportunity for healing, forgiveness, and reconciliation while knowing that we can never, should never, forget what brought us here today. Let us be glad that voice has not only been given to those whose sorrow and pain were their companions in this faith, but that the stories told by those voices have been received with a goal of redemption and understanding. Let us call upon that light which shines in each of us to give us the strength to walk together into the future and to do the work that is necessary and which does not end here today. Let us have the wisdom to lovingly have the conversations we need to have with each other that we must have with each other in order to grow this faith in radical love and inclusion. I invite you now to enter into a time of meditation. Settle back into your chairs. Breathe a little bit more deeply. If it's comfortable for you to close your eyes, please do. Spirit of life, spirit of love, spirit of generosity. As we draw near to that quiet, essential side of ourselves, may we open enough to consider the sacred choices we make each minute 
each hour, each day that add up to a lifetime. Let us become aware that here is the place to be forgiven and to forgive ourselves for any past thoughts and actions. Here is a place to begin again with love. As we are forgiven, let us open our hearts to forgive others, to pray for them well-being and joy, that they be lifted from worry and burden into peace and abundance. May we all be blessed with riches of the Spirit and moment upon moment of peace and serenity. Amen and blessed be. Our closing words today. The road that lies ahead of us is a long one, and the pace of progress will sometimes feel glacially slow. Never forget, though, that glaciers over time can carve out grand canyons and great lakes. Moving tectonic plates can rise up mountains over millennia, or they can explode awe-inspiring volcanoes in seconds. Our commitment to love and justice can do the same.